Hey Flossy friends, this is Silly Notion Stitcher coming to you um, with a special Flosstube edition for StitchCon 2023. I'm Lana and um, yes, I will be headed to StitchCon um, weekend B and leaving here um, from southeastern Pennsylvania um, next Wednesday, June 14th. Um, staying through um, that Sunday, whatever that is, Sunday morning, leaving Sunday morning to come back. So um, it's going to be kind of a, a long drive for me. Haven't done that sort of a long drive. Um, my driver is Kathleen of Snickerdoodle Stitch um, Floss Tube fame, and she assures me that, you know, this is less than going to Myrtle Beach, or maybe that was my mother who said that. So um, either way, neither one is assuring me that it's really a short trip, but it will all be good because it means lots of stitchy goodness. Um, I'm going to be, I'm already planning my, um, stitching and sewing projects for in the car. And, um, it's probably going to be like maybe about nine hours. I'm thinking till we have a few breaks in there. Um, so it's all good. So I just wanted to come to you for a special floss tube to, um, share, um, what I'm sort of planning, um, as far as like my seat, um, my, I have my stitchy mats that I made, um, for this retreat and I have another retreat. I'm doing the Stitch New England retreat in mid-October. So I'm really excited about that because it's going to be a gorgeous time to, to go up to uh, Massachusetts for that. Um, so yeah, so I will be showing you my little uh, seating plan and talking about um, the smalls exchange and what I made for that <clears throat> and some of the little gifts that I've made that I'm planning to take along. So we're going to just jump right in. Um, actually, I think what I'm going to start off with first um, there will be a brag table there. And so you get to bring one project and you can provide like a little card with it that explains um, what the pattern is, your fabrics, things like that. And so I have to decide and I would love your opinions. Um, I was all set to take one of these Halloween finishes. Um, this was inspired by, um, made by Michelle McGraw. So this is a frosted pumpkin, um, chart and it's, I guess there were two charts, but she broke them down into individual, um, dough bowl charts. And I just love, um, this backing fabric I found with the spiders. I love the haunted house. It sort of reminds me, I wanted to give a little bit of a nod to the Disney haunted mansion. That was always a favorite of my family, my parents and I, when we would go visit. So, um, I, I definitely picked like this sort of tealish green faux velvet and this, um, velvet lace trim with big chunky, um, yarn um, reminiscent of real chenille, but it's not real chenille, I guess. And then, yeah, this lacy sort of back. So I was all set to take one of these. Um, I, I really was going to take my whole, I have three of them in a mini dough bowl and I was going to take that, but I read that sort of the guidelines was just, you know, one per person because, um, there's only so much room to brag. <laughs> um, so I'm probably not going to go with one of those. I think because we're getting into summer, I am going to um, probably go with this. This is an Erica Michaels um, from a summertime pattern group. Um, and this is S'more, S'more Summer, please. With some DMC changes, I think I made to this. And um, a little campfire action on the top. 
So I do think I'm going to go with this. I sort of like it for the summer flair and, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more creative, um, you know, as a, as a finish, it's not something that's framed and, and whatever. It's just something a little bit different. It's the only strawberry I've made so far. This is on, um, picture this plus, I don't recall the color, um, but it would be, um, 14 count. I'm pretty sure it's 14 count. All right. So that's for the brag table. So I still have to do the little card that, you know, put some of those details together. Um, okay. So for the smalls exchange, um, I'm still a little uneasy about this, but I feel like I'm not alone. Um, there are people that are brand new to stitch con first time at a retreat. Some are making smalls to exchange. Some are a little too nervous about it. Some of them just truly didn't have time. And I almost different times. I almost bagged it cause I couldn't make, my decision of what I was going to do. Um, back in February, I made a trip um, to Salty Yarns in um, Ocean City, Maryland. Basically, it's Berlin, Maryland. And found two charts that I purchased that are from Little House Needleworks. Um, the patterns are from her Dear Diary series. And with those, she had like a, a bigger main pattern and then a small chart went with each of them and so for the one that I picked um, I picked friendship and um, just loved the blue and the green in this I did pick from my stash so um, I went a little bit different with than than the called for colors but actually I think I used Classic Color Works um, blue and green. I think that is blue corn, which is a great blue color. And then the green, um, I'm not sure if that's Eve's leaves. Um, trying to think of this other one that I really, um, which I got in a uh, club through Stitch North. Um, not in that right now, but it was a great um, Classic Color Works um, club to just sort of boost up your your colors from, from Classic Color Works. So um, I sort of finished it um, totally meant for it to, to go on this box. So I sized everything as I finished it um, to go on the box. Um, I had trouble finding a blue fabric in my stash that I liked for this. So I just happened to be at one of my little local fabric stores in the Lancaster area and voila, Fat Quarter was in this design with um, swirls and, and flowers that I felt like, you know, leaned into this pattern. So um, I was very excited about that. Then I needed cording to go around the edge and didn't have anything in my stash. So I had to go um, back to Joann's for something there. And it worked out really, really well. Um, I did pick some um, Aileen's, um, the fabric glue, specific, specifically for fabric, not the tacky glue. Kind of, um, I don't mind sewing cording on because I don't, that doesn't bother me, but for something like this, um, I could have used pins or done something like this, so I decided to do the glue. Now, this is not how I meant for this to be. I was going, I pictured sort of like tying it here. I think I'm going to um, drape the cord inside here. Um, and maybe just tape it so that the person has an opportunity to decide if they want to use it with this box or um, they can also use it, you know, in another way. Also with the exchange, um, you know, some people give some little extras with it. Um, I came over to this side of the room just saying, because I thought I'll get rid of the glare, but now I'm getting it from another place. So my apologies. But um I am going to um, provide um, 
one thread each of the blue corn and whatever green this is so I will definitely find that out and put that put that here for the person but I thought it's sort of like from my skein to yours um, just sort of you know sharing that and what I did with my cards so I I did get these made and um, provides my um, floss tube information and my Instagram and a lot of people have been doing um, the floss drops so I kind of thought well a lot of people have been coming to this repetitively so I just did something a little different and um, I did a project bag tag so people can still use this card if they want to and um, either attach it to um, a hook with their project bag or just put it in the project bag um, so I will be including that what I've done with these tags I have been making yo-yos not wooden toy yo-yos but these lovely things since Easter I'll say I got the brilliant idea that I do have a fabric stash and I thought well what can I use that I already have that might make it a little bit more economical for me to provide a memento to people with my card um, that might be a little you know new and different that they you know instead of a whole bunch of needle minders and things like that which of course we all love needle minders and I'm excited for whoever might be giving me one <laughs> but um, I did a yo-yo um, zipper pull is what the idea is. Now you could also do it as a scissor fob, I guess. Um, so on those, you know, got the lobster claw hook that you can hook onto your zipper and added some charms there. This one sort of has um, an October flare with a cute little owl charm as well. Yeah. So there's some threads hanging there, but, um, I did not make one per person. I did make definitely close to 200, I think. Um, so I'm going to see what the vibe is and if, if it's just sort of like, you know, trading one for one type of thing. Um, because I do have the retreat in October too. So might save some for that but I have two bags of these <laughs> to be giving out but I plan on um, definitely at least one or two um, with my smalls exchange this floss will go in here and then the final thing I have for the for the exchange item is this really cute little um, thread bed and this was an idea I saw with um, <sighs> the jingle ball um, I wasn't really able to do any of the classes with the jingle ball last December but um, oh my gosh the heartstring samplery designer I think this is what she provided as either like a little class or a sort of um, it might have been a class so you've got these two cute little circles this is a very thin flannel piece this is a cute little um fabric with beads on it it is a um dear stella fabric i loved that i found these um buttons i think the brand is Le petite um and these buttons were found at I saw them at two different local Lancaster type fabric shops and they tend to be on the more in some ways they tend to be more of the budget type fabric shops and Mennonite shops so I don't know um, where Le Petit you know sells buttons otherwise um, and then basically you um, put those together you have your elastic tie sewn in the middle and then um, sewing across the piece so that they do stay together and might help to know then how to um, fold it back up. 
So you fold it exactly in half and then these sides tuck in so that your fastener is still in the middle here and then you just put it over your little button. And you know, a thread bed, I am now seeing the value of why I would wanna have these almost in every project bag because you inevitably have, you know, when you're finishing for the night or your session, you've got one or two threads left from, you know, a six strand piece. And I wind up like sort of um, putting them in a little circle and hoping that they sort of stick together. But now I have something a little bit more, you know, fashionable. So that will go in here with this smalls exchange as well. So it's, it's looking really put together for this video, isn't it? Um, but these are some of the loose ends that I am still pulling together. And then something else that some people do is um, they might bring snacks for the table that they're going to be sitting at. This will be in a conference center. So the tables are going to be round and probably about six, six to eight people at each table. Um, because there are 300 people at StitchCon, I think they do try to, <laughs> um, might be more leaning towards the eight um, number of people at the table. So I have put together these little bags. Um, so each person will get, um, definitely get a yo-yo or two and, um, they will each get the B style, um, of these thread bits. I do have, I did bring up my, hmm, my stash of other styles that I'm also making. Um, we'll see if I find those for this video, but, um, that will be fun to, to leave something, um, that I've made and, um, you know, that people hopefully will enjoy. Um, okay. And then the other thing that's important for the retreat is how are you going to bring everything in, keep it all together, but not take up too much space. <laughs> so I can be one at our sewing retreats that starts to really spread out. And before I know it, I'm encroaching on my neighbors. So some people um, bring retreat mats. There are people out there on Etsy, I believe, who, you know, sew them and sell them. Um, thankfully, I'm a sewer. So I started making these in the winter. Oh, here's my extra thread beds I found. So I will show those in a bit. Um, so what is a retreat mat? So I have two of these and I used a, um, stabilizer. Um, I think this is Bozal foam. So I got to pick from four fabrics and then they're reversible. But I really love this. It sort of has like a travel theme to it. And then this is Blackbird fabric. So I could go Blackbird style. And I will show the other one in a second. Now, this is pretty wide. So I'm going to have to see how this works on the table. I very likely may have to put it on the table the long way. Um, and so basically, if you envision that this is sitting in front of me, um, I'm going to have my light sitting here and I have um, my metal, my metal stand that will have my um, ability to have my needle minder or magnets on there to hold up my chart. And then I do have, um, this is pinned here right now, but I am probably going to change this. I was antiquing over the weekend. I was at a really neat um, specialty, um, it's called Pen Dry Goods Market. And um, it's a once a year type of thing that all the vendors specialize in, or the items they bring in for the day are samplers and all needleworks antiques. So I found some old time, very large safety pins that I am putting on here 
to um, hook up my floss ring. Um, I have a flower on here just for a little decor. Um, and I'll show you how I got the idea for adding like the safety pin. I got it from this fabric that many of us have been loving and enjoying. So I was looking at this one day and I'm like, oh, there's a pin there. Because I was thinking, oh, let me add, you know, and I, there's buttons. And I thought, oh, well, let me add some buttons and, and I'll hook my floss ring to that. Well, no. Like, easy peasy, I found this gigantic safety pin. It's not, it's sharp, but it's not really sharp enough to get through um, the thickness of this without, I was nervous it was gonna sort of tear it. So I just put another safety pin there today. And, um, sorry, I'm going to cough. <coughs> um, can hang my floss from that. This will all be so, um, <laughs> so special and perfect. Of course, when I get there, I feel like I'm a little, uh, discombobulated today. It's Monday and I just finished my work day. So I thought I would try to get this special edition in. This is a Lori Holt fabric. So if I want less busy, I can flip it to that side. All right, and so, yeah, I decided that this is the bag I'm going to use. Um, a friend of mine, one of my sewing friends, I think I showed this before. This is a Harrods bag. She knows that I really enjoyed my England trip, and I tap into that when I need that vibe. Um, so my light fits in here perfectly. So this will on the table in front of me and I'll tilt it towards me this way then I can just collapse it they do tell us that we will be able to keep our stuff in the room and the rooms get locked but certainly anything that we really value we should take with us I have project bags that I made that are um, a little bit different um, I didn't bother quilting some of these bags so they are a good width and they fit right in here. I am noticing that my Harrods bag actually has like a little zippered pocket as well so that will be handy. And this is the chart stand that I have. It always reminds me of our lockers from school. <laughs> um, and you can adjust the height to what you need it to be. So I have a lot of needle minders on here that I just keep. See, I'm all ready. Happy finishes, everyone. So I'm very excited to um, get there. And I have one chart that I have planned to be a finish at the retreat. Once I finish it there, I can go to the front of the room and ring the bell. Um, many people have one or two charts that they plan to finish at the retreat just so they can do that um so you can better believe i'm going to be doing that i did want to show here's a whole box of, of yo-yos that still need cards um but i have some that are like sort of christmas themed here's one for winter with a snowflake on it um and then i tried to do some that might appeal to more um prim and sampler um, folks. Very excited that I FFO'd this little lady. Um, just finished this last night and a little scissors can fit in here. Um, so I think I might have to take this just to um, have it at my at my seat and uh, she might hold my scissors for me. Um, I could also put floss tags in here if people are handing them out. So that might be fun. Okay. And I did want to just quickly show 
um, I am trying to prepare projects ahead of time so that I have just more mindless fill-in um, so that, you know, I feel like I can be present and chit-chatting with people and um, still getting a lot of stitching done. So one of those projects is going to be this um, chart. This is Lady Liberty. Oh, My Lady Liberty by um, Little House Needleworks. And I'm doing it as a stand-up. Um, they had one displayed at Salty Yarns, and I loved it that way. I don't want to lose my needle here. Where's my... All my needle minders. Um, so, so far I have filled in her skirt, the sides of her skirt, not filled in. I have outlined them so that I'm ready to go. So I stitch in hand and this is 20 count, uh, legacy, um, taffeta cream. And I love this stuff. It just is so easy to work with. This will probably not take me very long to fill this in, so I am going to try to um, maybe get her her arms um, outlined as well. I am very tempted to modify this. Um, I like the stripes at the bottom of her skirt, and actually at this dry goods um, antiques thing, I sat through two lectures and one of them was about women's dresses around the time of the little house on the prairie <laughs> time frame so like the 18 70s 80s 90s and they showed some where the pleats were at the bottom of the skirt like that i kind of like maybe doing all stripes in here. It could be a little busy, but you know, I'm going to be having it out for patriotic time and that's when you want to be loud and busy with <laughs> your patriotic um, stitching. So I am still pondering that. Um, so very excited. Um, I think we have a really good hotel in terms of it will be um, very close walking distance and um, don't have too many side trips planned as of now we'll just sort of see how it goes but we get to ride the stitchy bus to keepsakes and that's very exciting I can't wait to see all the great models at keepsakes I hear that they are just filled you know the walls and tables just oodles of finishes um, just a few more of my um, thread beds. I saw these little crabs on some flannel. This one, I tried something different in sewing this together rather than doing the crisscrosses. Not sure how that will go. But um, these are little astronauts. So I have a whole bunch of these. Um, and I think these will be great for Stitch New England. Um, maybe they're more lobster country up there. I can't remember how crabby they are up there. But um, either way, I will be working on that. And the grand finale. Should it get chilly in Cincinnati? I would love to do the bridge. There's at least one of the bridges. Um, crosses from Ohio, crosses over the, I'm sure it's the Ohio River, right into Connecticut, and you can do it on foot. So it looks very pretty at night. i um, not sure that that will happen, but that sounds fun. And it seems like a lot of people are out there doing that sort of stuff. This is my cute stitchy jacket. And I have another t-shirt that I'll be picking up when I get there. So I definitely have to go to pick up my t-shirt. So it's coming soon. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in and let me know um, 
if you have any thoughts about which um, brag I should take. And hope to see you at StitchCon Weekend B. All right, bye.